In lab three, um, you're going to take your RCA and show the result on a seven segment display. And if the output of the result of the RCA is more than 15, which is a hex F, then you're going to turn the display off. So the first part of this lab is to design a seven segment display. And you know, you should always draw out a black box diagram and then uh, generate your truth table. Now, in the lecture video that Dr. Benson created, she starts you off on this. Now, we're going to display the result of the RCA as a hex character. So just make sure to use lowercase b for 11 and lowercase d for 13, uh, just so that they don't look like an 8 and a 0. Now, instead of uh, using Boolean equations, uh, reduce uh, with k-maps. Uh, in this design we're going to let the software uh, do the work of coming up with the logic circuits we need and we'll be using case statements and if statements. In fact um, I have a added requirement that I'll talk about in in a little bit where uh, one of the lower level modules of this design I want you to use a case statement and one of the other lower level modules of this design I want you to use an if statement so I'll talk about that coming up so first you want to uh, design the seven segment display then uh, we're gonna need a mux in this design so you'll design a mux and um, this mux we want you to use uh, a parameter and I'll tell you what that's all about also coming up and then these are going to be your low level lower level modules, uh, newer lower level modules in addition to the RCA that you already designed and then you'll need a top level uh, that connects uh, these lower level modules all together. So here's the uh, high level black box diagram, right? You always want to start off with the high level. So this shows the two uh, four bit inputs A and B that are going to be added by the RCA and then our main outputs we have two main outputs one is a seg output okay that's uh, seven bits that's determining which segments of the seven segment display light uh, recall from Dr. Benson's video that a zero on a segment will light the segment on the basis board and a one will turn that segment off and then there's also an anode, uh, abbreviated here AN, uh, output that's 4 bits. And again, as in Dr. Benson's lecture video, the bits of this anode output, it controls whether the display uh, will function. There's four displays uh, on the basis board. Each one uh, has one of these anode bits. And when an anode bit is equal to 0, that turns the display on. And when it's a 1, that will turn the display off. Okay? Now, here's the lower level, okay, low level or structural black box diagram. So, as I mentioned previously, in this design, what's new is the seven segment decoder that's going to take the BCD which is the sum output. We're using the sum output of the RCA as our BCD input to the seven segment display. And then the output of the seven segment will go to the segments on the board. And then there's a carry out of the RCA that's going to control the MUX. Okay. Um, so you'll have to design the seven segment display module and also this MUX module again you already have the RCA so you're just reusing the RCA from uh, the previous lab but we're using this carry out of the RCA to determine uh, which data gets passed to the anode output and therefore controls the display uh, that will light so you can see here that one input to the MUX is a binary 1110 the other input to the MUX are all ones so when this data on this input gets passed to the output which will happen when the carry out is a zero well that's gonna light just the furthest to the right display on your basis board because that's the only bit that's zero is the furthest to the right anode bit um, but when the carry out is equal to one then 
the data on the one input of the MUX, which are all ones, will get outputted to the anode on your anode of your seven segment displays on your board, and therefore all the displays will be off. So this is how we're making the displays uh, turn off when the result is greater than F, which is uh, 15 in binary, right? Because for anything uh, 15 or below, you're not going to get a carry out uh, for your RCA. So this is the lower level um, diagram, and you'll need this diagram to create your top module because this is where you get um, the connections, uh, which inputs and outputs uh, connect to all your modules. So here is an example uh, of a case statement. In fact, this example is where you need to start for your seven segment display. Okay, because this example is a seven segment display module, and um, you can see at the top here is the same as any other module where you declare inputs and outputs. Now, one thing you haven't seen before is this logic that anytime you're using an always com block, if your output is within an always com block, then you have to put this logic uh, where you declare the output. So you see seg, output seg is within this always com block. It's um, being used in the case statement. Therefore, this logic has to be here. Um, okay, so anytime you're using case statements or if statements, uh, you know, you're not using the Boolean expressions like we were previously, the case statement and if statements, they have to go within an always com block. And you can see right after you uh, type in the always com, and this is always underscore com, it's kind of hard to see with the red line there. Uh, but then you have your uh, begin, and now you have your case statement. Uh, inside the parentheses of a case statement, that's what's called a sensitivity list, and that just means whatever is inside that uh, parentheses when that changes, anything inside the parentheses, any variable within the parentheses changes, well then you start to, um, it, it activates the case. So here, anytime an input B, C, or D changes, this case statement's gonna be evaluated. So you can see here, um, inside the case statement for zero, okay, when our B, C, D input equals zero, we're gonna make the segment outputs equal to, uh, what you see here. Now, this bit over here corresponds to the A segment of the seven segment display, and this furthest to the left uh, bit corresponds to the G segment. Okay, and then we just go A, B, C, D, E, F to G. So remembering again that zeros will light up segments and ones will turn segments off, you can see that with this binary one and then all zeros, all the segments of the display will be lit except for G, which is the middle segment, so a zero will be displayed. And then here, if the BCD is a one, well then the seg output will equal this binary where only B and C uh, segments have a zero, so only B and C uh, will light up and that will be a one. Okay, remember that the seven segment displays, um, the segments are labeled A, this is your A segment, B, C, D, E, F, and then the middle is G. Okay, and then for a case statement, now, now you'll have to fill in the rest, this is just zero, one, two, but if you understand uh, what's here, you should be able to complete this for all uh, the possible BCD values from 0 uh, to 15. Where again, 15, we're using hex, so 15, we want an F to appear. Uh, you know, 10 is A, 11 is B, again, use lowercase b, uh, 12 is C, 13 is D, use lowercase d, and then uh, 14 is E, and then 15 F. And you always want to have a default case for a case statement uh, before you end it. And you can see here the default is just making all the segments off by making all the bits, uh, segment bits, equal to 1. Okay, then you have your end to go with this um, begin of the case, and then you end the module. 
Okay, so it is a requirement of the design to use a case statement for the seven segment display. Now for the MUX, uh, it's a requirement in the design to use an if statement. And here's an example of an if statement with a module called a comparator. Okay, so your design is going to have a MUX, but I put this example of a comparator uh, in this intro just to give you uh, an example to look at. And from this example, you should be able to figure out what, what you need to do uh, as far as an if statement goes for the MUX. Um, you can see this comparator has two inputs, uh, both 8 bits wide, uh, bits A and B. There's three outputs. Again, because these outputs are within an always com block, you need to put logic here. And you can see that um, this comparator, the way it works is that if the A input, let's call this the A input over here. I didn't write in this. Okay, if our A input's greater than the B, well, the GT output will be activated. So if you had this hooked up to an LED on your board, that LED would light. Where the other two outputs, LT and equal, would be zero, and those LEDs would be off. If B is greater than A, well, then the LT output's activated. The other two are not. And then if, if um, A is not greater than B and B is not greater than A, they must be equal. So that's the else condition, and therefore the equal uh, output equals 1, and the other two outputs, uh, GT and LT, are 0. So um, in Verilog, system Verilog, uh, these if statements, you can have as many else ifs as you want. Okay, There's only one here, but you could have more than one if uh, your design uh, called for that. But you got to have you know, an if, and you got to have an else. The else if is optional or uh, like I said, you can have as as many as as you need. Now I typed in or I wrote in uh, n module here just because this got cut off when I transferred this image over to my uh, notebook here. So just want to make sure you you do have to end your module. So like I said, this example is for a comparator, but you're going to do an if statement for a mux. So uh, this is the mux in our design here where it only has two inputs. Right, muxes always have one output, but have multiple inputs. So this is a two-to-one mux. So um, you just have a one-bit select line. When that uh, select line is a zero, the data on the zero input will get passed through to the output. And when that select line is a one, the data on the one input gets passed through to the output. So um, the if statement that you need is actually less than uh, what this comparator uh, calls for. Now, the one other requirement of this design is to parameterize uh, your MUX. So what we mean by parameterize is by making um, inputs and outputs um, basically um, more flexible, where you can have those inputs and outputs. Um, in this case, the width of the inputs and outputs uh, equal to a certain number, but you can easily change that number uh, if you wish to. So this is an example here of parameterizing uh, the comparator on the previous page, where at the top of the of the code, where you have module comparator, if you just insert what you see in bold here, okay, this uh, hash mark, and then in parentheses, you can uh, define a parameter, and you can see here I'm defining a parameter width, and I'm setting it equal to 7. Whatever, um, anytime you have a parameter, whatever value you use within the parentheses of the lower level block or lower level module, that becomes your default value, okay? Um, and you can see that we're using a parameter uh, for the highest bit number of the input of both A and B. So this is going to determine the width of our uh, input data for both A and B. So of course with the highest uh, number bit at 7, 0 through 7, that means we have 8-bit inputs for both inputs A and B. Now, 
as I mentioned earlier, whatever number you list here in the lower level module uh, for your parameter, that becomes the default. But if you want to change that default, you change it in the top module. So, for example, let's say I wanted to change this width from 7 to 3. Well, I don't have to do anything in the lower level module. I can just leave this the way it is. But in my top module, um, I would just, where I um, have this module uh, listed, I would just put hash mark and then within the parentheses next to that hash mark just put the new value for that parameter. So just by doing this in the top module that would change the parameter width for this comparator from 7 to 3. So we, uh, or I want you to do this um, for the mux in this example that I want you to parametize it so you can follow the same thing that was done here for the comparator except um, you know we want a 4-bit with inputs for our mux so if you make the uh, default value uh, 3 right so it's 3 to 0 that's 4 bits um, and then you wouldn't need this in your uh, top module because it would already default to what we wanted for. But if you make the width something different in your lower level module, you know, something different than uh, 3, then you would have to put the 3 here in your top module to get it to be the 4 bits that we want in our design. And the reason why the parameterization param can be a useful thing is because you'll see that often uh, for certain modules, you know, there's a certain number of bits that you need for a particular design, but then for another design, everything's the same, or what you need is everything the same in that module, except for you might just need a different uh, width value. So that's where the parameters come in handy. They just give you a little bit more uh, flexibility uh, than if you didn't have it.